everybody in Poland. This is Paul Anthony Romero, and I'm here with my friend, the actor and trainer, Christopher Robert Smith. And we're going to show you a little bit about how he helps me uh, get in shape for the piano. Tell us a few things about yourself and explain from where did you get your interest in classical music and how did it influence your work? Uh, I think when I was a little boy, I, the first piece of classical music I ever heard was Arthur Rubinstein playing uh, a Chopin Nocturne. Uh, I think I was about five, about five years old. It was this one, um, the F sharp major, opus 15 number two. such a really pretty sound to me as a little boy that uh, I started listening to more and more classical music on the radio and it, was, it just drew me into a world of European music um, that uh, just had a magical sound to me. So um, I, would, I would look for classical recordings, find classical radio stations, make my parents play me classical music on the radio or the record player or tape and that's how uh, I got drawn to classical music. I came from a little city in, West, in California called West Covina and there are no concert halls, there are no, I don't think any kind of concerts, pop concerts or, uh, or classical concerts, so my, my only way to hear music was through the radio or recording, so that was how uh, my first exposure to classical music, and it was through Chopin. Do you prefer to compose music or to perform? I prefer to do both uh, performing and composing because um, performing in front of people gives you direct contact with the audience and you can share your music live with people who, are, who like music and who are interested and so it's a completely different experience. It's, it's like having a conversation with a very, very good friend. Uh, when you're composing music, it's pretty much you're by yourself, uh, especially like soundtrack music, I have to think of it all by myself and not really show anybody until it's absolutely completed. And then, prob not a problem, but the, this way it gives you a lot of time to perfect it and make it just the way you want, except that you don't really get a reaction until the recording is out uh, in the public and then it takes a while for you to get feedback whether people like it or not or it means anything to them or they respond to it. So. But it gives you very complete control over how you see an artistic vision. So I, I think both those things, composing and performing, um, give me great satisfaction in, in different ways. You write music to both movies and video games. What gives you more pleasure? I initially thought that when I was a kid, or I'm sorry, when um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be just a classical composer, and I only wanted to write symphonies, piano concertos, and operas. And then I got involved with soundtrack music, and uh, computer games, I thought would, I would just do that for a while and then move and go into movies. 
But what I found is that with computer games, because the players have to play the games over and over again, they actually hear the music over and over and over again, you know, day after day or week after week, month after month, and it really, they really get to know your music in a much more uh, connective and profound way than if you do music for a movie. Because most of the times when you see a movie, you only see it once or twice, so you're not really paying attention completely to the music. Um, most of the time. So I think ultimately I thought I would have preferred uh, working more in the movies, but as it turns out, I think I ended up having more connection with people through computer games. So I'm happy I actually would say now I prefer computer games. However, my new uh, thing that I'm doing with my best friend Todd Stroik, who actually is part Polish by the way, he uh, is writing a musical and he's creating the story and the words and the lyrics and I'm com uh, composing the music for it. So working together for months on this project is actually really, really exciting for me. I'm really, really excited by that. And one of the nice things is that um, I'm, I'm bringing back some old melodies from some of the heroes in my magic games that I only was able to use for maybe like two minutes in those soundtracks. And now I can turn them into full songs, full musical numbers and with words and singing. So I think it's going to be a great way to take uh, those, some of those melodies that are almost like my little children and allow them to grow up on a stage. So that, this is very exciting. In Poland, there's a huge group of fans of your Heroes of Might and Magic soundtrack. Have you ever considered visiting our country? <laughs> our country. Great. Uh, yes, uh, you know, Poland is definitely one of those countries that has always been high on my list for uh, several reasons. Because I grew up listening to the music of Frederick Chopin. Uh, it's, he was always probably my top three favorite composers. And uh, I play a lot of his music. And I've done, uh, I just know his work very, very well. And um, as it turns out, Heroes of Might and Magic is, um, was, uh, was popular in, or is popular in Poland, and so that's the second reason why I always wanted to go. First, to see the land that Chopin came from, and number two, to see also where people who play heroes uh, live. And also, number three, I heard it's a really, really beautiful country. Uh, even the, 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 the north and the countryside, I heard it's gorgeous besides uh, Krakow and, um, uh, what's the capital of Poland? Sorry, I don't hear again. Anyway, I, I would definitely. I, I, I'm planning on going. Uh, I'm one of the one of the fans from Heroes. Uh, is maybe going to try to help facilitate a, uh, a Heroes of My Magic concert there next year or maybe the year after. I'm planning on going to Russia and uh, maybe uh, to Munich and then to uh, Poland, maybe on the same trip. So definitely going to be in Poland within the next two years, and specifically for a Heroes of My Magic concert. When composing a soundtrack to the Heroes of Might and Magic, which classical composer inspired you most? Uh, actually, that's a very good question because the first soundtrack I did for Heroes 1, uh, the producers, Rob King and the, uh, and the people over at, I think it was a 3DO, uh, uh, no, sorry, New World Computing, who created the first Heroes, actually wanted um, maybe a Baroque sounding soundtrack, like Bach or uh, Vivaldi. So, the template I used at that time was music by Bach, like for instance, the English suite. Um, or, um, let's see, uh, what's another piece by Bach? Like the, uh, one of the preludes and fugues, you know. So I did one of the pieces, the Barbarian theme, the, in the style of, uh, style of Bach. So. And as, as the soundtrack, as the games progressed, uh, Heroes 2, Heroes 3, Heroes 4, it was my producer, Rob King, who had the idea that why don't we uh, take the music style and push it a little bit um, in different directions. That's why in Heroes 
three, we started using operatic voices, and I started making the music a little bit maybe more like late 19th century composers, and sometimes like Franz Liszt, sometimes like Rachmaninoff and Prokofiev. By the time I did Heroes 5, I was starting to get more into world sounds. I was trying to incorporate uh, the orchestrations of like uh, uh, Kachatoyan, a great Armenian composer, uh, music, m more music that uh, from the east, uh, from Iran, uh, from Bulgaria, things like that. So I slowly was trying to expand. And then here at six, I finally got to do something from Asia. So I listened to a lot of Chinese and Japanese music. And I'm sorry, my phone is going off, but uh, yeah. So I do use different composers in different eras to influence my. Um, music in the soundtracks. It's been 10 years since you started work with the Heroes of Might and Magic series. Do you think this time was lost for you or that it was one of the best adventures of your life? Actually, I did start at Heroes uh, 1 uh, 20 years ago, uh, or maybe 19 years ago, so it's been actually uh, almost 20 years. Um, no, no, it's been the, one of the best things of my life. When I was a little kid, uh, I was sort of a, a prodigy and I started touring around the world when I was like 11. Making, I think I did my first recording when I was about 11 and my first TV show when I was 13. And uh, there was a few years there where uh, it was nice. It was sort of like being a, a, a like a, you know, like a little music, music star. And then. Uh, then I went to college after that, went to Curtis Institute of Music and the Paris Conservatory, and then I uh, went to school in London, uh, Guildhall. But then in those years, those were the years that I became an adult, so by the time I finished my proper music education, I didn't really have a career anymore. So when I turned 21, all the way up to the age of 30, I didn't really do anything in music. I uh, worked as a salesman for IBM selling ink. I was a construction worker. I worked in historic restoration, like gold leafing ceilings um, as a cook for two years. Um, so I did a lot of different things in my late 20s and it wasn't until I met Rob King that he offered me the job as a composer for the first Heroes of Might and Magic uh, soundtrack. So, uh, or I mean, I think I was at 29. So, yeah, so, so definitely it was a very, very great thing that I um, met Rob and uh, he offered me a chance to do soundtracks for computer games. It, it never occurred to me to do soundtracks for computer games. I, I, don't, even, I don't even play computer games. So, yes, I definitely don't think it was lost. It actually was a great thing to happen to me for my uh, composing development. Music to Heroes of Might and Magic 6 is the least characteristic for you. Was it your intention to make the whole album to sound so similar? If yes, what did you want to achieve with that? The Heroes of Might and Magic 6, uh, I was hired to create six town themes, and then they had um, other composers take my town themes and then uh, re, uh, rearrange them for different parts of the game. So uh, there was um, my producer at the time, who uh, was a little ill and he, had, he was uh, in the hospital for a little bit so it, it, made it, un, it made it unable for us to do all the other parts of the game except for the town themes because we were on a time budget and we didn't have enough time to do all of those uh, parts. So that's why that soundtrack, the main themes are by me and then the, all the variations were by the other composers using my melody. So it was simply about um, a time frame, they had a shipping date, uh, we were behind schedule uh, because of uh, uh, Rob's uh, illness, and so um, it was just a matter of time constraint, trying to get the project done. The way music to video games is created has changed throughout the last couple of years. What future do you see from music composers? Oh, what future do I see for music composers? Oh, this, well, the thing is, uh, music is one of those things like food, like human beings will always need music it's to be part of their lives. So uh, from any musician's point of view, you just find 
you try to find your way and, and uh, areas uh, where your music is needed, whether it's in a concert hall, a nightclub, soundtracks, uh, video games, movies, commercials, uh, you know, telephone, apps, any, anything. So I think when I was a little kid, I would have never guessed that I, I would be doing soundtracks or uh, the kind of music that I'm doing now. I just thought I was going to be doing Las Vegas shows like Liberace. <laughs> so you just never know where where your life takes you. So as you, whether you're a, a cook or a musician or a painter or any kind of um, somebody in the arts, you just go where there is demand for your work. So I, that's why it, it makes it a very exciting but kind of um, uh, unknown career to be in because you just never know what things will change, what things will happen for you, what opportunities happen, what opportunities close. So right now my next focus of the next part of my career of maybe uh, is to get my music onto the stage, whether it's a musical or a symphony or a ballet. I would just like to see it uh, with living people on a stage and a live audience now. The Heroes of Night Magic 3 is particularly full of beautiful town themes. What was your inspiration while creating it? And of which one are you proud of the most? Oh gosh, inspiration for Heroes 3. Uh, usually when I get a, a project, the producers are, are giving me descriptions of the areas and uh, what the feelings that they need or what the areas will look like even though they're not completely um, digitally rendered at that point. So I just try to get the emotion that they're, that they're telling me that they're trying to create and I try to make music that fits that kind of uh, mood. Um, so I, there wasn't any particular kind of inspiration. I tried, to, I tried very hard to listen to the producers and give them what they want. My, one of my favorite tunes is this one. Um, um, So this one I can kind of chill out to, so I, I like that one best of all. Would you share with us what plans Ubisoft has when it comes to organizing Heroes of Might and Magic Symphony? Has anything moved towards it and soon will we be able to see and listen to the series of concerts dedicated to your work? Yeah, that's, uh, the Ubisoft had nothing to do with uh, the idea for Heroes Symphony. That's, that's my plan because, um, like I said before, some, some of these melodies only have an opportunity to live for like maybe a minute, two minutes at maximum within the soundtrack. So by putting some of the best Heroes of My Magic melodies in a symphony form, it gives them like a good 40 minutes to live and breathe and develop uh, amongst each other and it uh, gives me an opportunity to take some of those highlights and put it into the world of classical music so or orchestras around the world can play it. I did a, a, a for Video Games Live, a Heroes of Might and Magic medley which is only, I think only maybe like five, six minutes long but what I did, I, I pieced together uh, six different melodies from six of the different games and put it into one big piece. And so it kind of gives an idea of what the symphony would be like. But the problem with the symphony, it takes a, a huge amount of time. Right now I uh, finished a ballet, I'm finishing uh, this Gods and Mortals musical with my best friend Todd. And so those are projects that uh, for me I need to finish first and then um, I know I've been talking about Heroes Symphony for the past uh, couple of years, so I need to 
finish that. But the 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 other thing is um is uh, it, I'm still formulating how I want to do the third and fourth movements on that symphony. So. Uh, as a matter of fact, it took Brahms 11 years to write his first symphony, so I still have a, a little bit of a deadline, um, that, I, that uh, a time frame to finish that. So it definitely will happen, but when it happens, I'll make sure there's a, a website dedicated directly for it. And as far as the Heroes My Magic Piano Concerts, uh, they will be solo piano concerts next year. I did one last year in Budapest, but the, the following ones I really want to do in Siberia, Munich, and in Poland, and hopefully other, other places in the world. So um, those will be coming up. So hang in there.